G'day, it's Dan from muso.com.au. I'm here with Michael from PV on the Galactic Music Stand. G'day, how you doing, mate? Doing fantastic, it's a great show. Uh, we're here to talk about some of PV's uh, product here and talk about some new models to the to the liner. I noticed uh, the little uh, Piranha unit. Can you tell me a little bit about that model? Absolutely. Um, in the States, it's getting very popular, the little bitty you know, metal heads. And uh, we kicked it around for a while and didn't really know exactly what to do with it until we just said, you know what, let's just shoehorn a uh, 6505 in this little box. We called it the Piranha. Actually, Hartley PV named it. He names a lot of our things. And um, he wanted something that was small, it still had a bite, so he thought of Piranha, and it's just taken off. People love it, it's not very expensive, you know, it's, um, it's actually a little different than most people's products like that. When we dissected some of that product, we, we noticed that the tubes really didn't do anything, but with the Piranha, the distortion is coming from a high voltage tube. The solid state 20 watt power amp is the power, and so because of that, you can actually plug in uh, you know, an auxiliary piece like an iPad or something, and play along in your headphones. There's an effects loop, and it's just a great little, great little piece, man. It's a great little amp. You also uh, were just saying that you don't need to actually play it with a load, so you can record direct into a PC or play into a cab if you want to. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's also um, it's got a special EQ on it, to where just one knob all the way to the left is a scooped modern sounding metal sound, and all the way to the right is 777 on a three band EQ, which was actually what Eddie Van Halen used. So that's where that comes from. So anywhere in between. So it's a unique circuit. Uh, so PV also uh, has got a long history of making a bunch of different models besides the new Piranha. Can you tell me a little bit about Hartley getting started in the amp industry and about the, the business? Absolutely. We have a very unique story. I mean, in fact, most unique in the business. I mean, the blues and rock and roll started in Mississippi. And it was, it's where it started, where it was founded. And Hartley was smack dab in the middle of all that. Um, what happened in, really in the mid-60s was that uh, when rock and roll was getting hot, all the little fledgling you know, music companies were all getting bought up. I mean, Fender got bought out by CBS and Norland by, by Gibson and uh, Beatrice Foods, who makes Sara Lee desserts, you know, decided they'd buy Harmon. I mean, you know, so, so those companies basically were, were, were taking advantage of the customer, making huge profit margins, and Hartley saw an opportunity to, to come in there and, and sell good gear at a fair price, which has always been our mission statement. And it took off, you know, um, right place, right time, I guess you could say. But, but he still to this day has a strong passion for the working musician, you know. I mean, he loves artists, we all do, but, you know, that's not who pays the bills. And, and, and it's the guys walking around here that they go home and, and pretend to play, maybe be the rock star, or maybe they go on the weekends and play. And that's, that's who we're for. And, uh, and Hartley, he's really got a passion for those guys. And that's why still after 51 years, he comes to work every day. And he's still intimately involved in every single decision that we make. Um, so it's a special story, and, uh, and, and it really not very many people, people know about it. So it's, that's one thing I do on the road is tell that story. And I think also uh, when you talk about the passion and being involved, you were saying he actually came up with the name Piranha for that unit. You know, coming up with names to products is one of my least favorite things to do. Uh, that's why you know, a lot of companies just resort to numbers. It's easy. Hartley's always like to name things, you know, and he, frankly, names most of our products. He just has a real knack for it. He really does. So talking about numbers and names uh, and all the detail is in the numbers. Uh, obviously, you're well known for the 6505 series, uh, but there's also a 6534, which has a different power stage. Can you talk about the difference between those two voices? Sure, absolutely. Obviously, the 6505 was born out of the 5150. As a matter of fact, it's born out of the first 5150, so that the black letter logo is what the 6505 is, which stands for the company was founded in 65 and we put the amp out in 05. And we actually were getting, um, artists were actually asking us if we could customize their amps with, with the L34s. And so we thought, well, why not just put out the 6534, which we did. And it's been very popular with artists, actually more so than the, than the 05, I think. Um, and it just breaks up a little differently. It's got a little bit more of a British flair to it. Uh, so it's a real hybrid between American metal and British hard rock, so it's, it's a great amplifier. And look, I love a full stack and a 6505 blaring scrape, but I also love the portability of some of the mini heads, so uh, some of the functionality that they offer is really great. Can you talk to me about maybe the classic 20 and also uh, the little uh, um, the mini uh, MH series of heads? Sure, abs absolutely. We, we were admittedly a little late to the game with mini heads. It was uh, unsure, we were unsure how, how long that would go, and it, when we realized we were just you know missing out, uh, we really just didn't want to just kind of 
throw something out there. We wanted to really do go over the top. So the features on the back panel are unlike anything else anybody else has. I mean, there's a USB, there's a speaker defeat. So when you push that button, an impedance load gets put on the speaker output. So you don't even need a speaker. You know, I can I can get the mini heads and I can plug them into the computer or use the XLR output to, to record silently. And I've had people email me from New York City, from Tokyo, all over the world. People are saying, man, thank you guys, because I can actually record in my apartment silently and still get all the sound of the power tubes. So the XLR and the USB are actually tapped off after the power section. Um, and then they're both actually compensated to sound like a microphone. And so it's just a great product, it really is. So you got the, um, you got the Valve King, which is an American clean with a British dirty. Uh, you've got the Classic 20, which is uh, a, a non-master volume clean channel. So if you crank it up, it'll break up beautifully with a really nice dirty channel. And then obviously the 6505 mini head is just, you know, metal. <laughs> Now, I've been playing a Classic 30 for years, but I noticed the Classic 20's also got a built-in attenuator, so you talked about playing in bedrooms. Uh, what options do you have at attenuation on that unit? Well, well, all the it actually started with the Valve King series, which had 100%, 20%, 5% power. So with the 100 watt head, you had 120 and five, obviously. And with the mini heads, you have, you have 20 watts, five watts, or one watt. And so that way I can, I can get the breakup on the clean channel like I want at a lower volume if I need to do that. Uh, and, and it works works great. Um, it's, it's something that um, not many people do because frankly, it's expensive. Uh, the, the parts that are in the amp required to make that happen are very expensive parts. So, but with Hartley PV, it's, you gotta do it the right way. You know, we don't cut corners. And so some people might be familiar with the T-series of guitars that you're offering you know, a couple of decades ago, but you've also got a, a line, the AT200. Can you tell me what's different about that guitar? Well, it all started, uh, we were talking with Antares, who make Auto-Tune, about putting it into a mixer. And that was kind of moving along. Well, the owner of Antares, who, had, frankly, I had never met, came up to me at a NAMM show, and he held out a little card, and he says, you're going to like that. You're going to like what that does, man. And I'm like, all right, I'm listening. You know, that happens every 10 minutes at NAMM. Usually it's something crazy, but he said, he told me what this little chip does. And I was like, hold on a minute. And I, and I went and got you know my boss and I got Hartley. And basically what you have is you have a, a guitar that goes six N to six A to D, eight to D converters. Then it gets auto-tuned, however you want it. And then back to analog. So there's no moving parts. It's almost instantaneous. And um, there's all kinds of, of bonus features. So different tunings, different instruments. Uh, it's just, it's brilliant. It's absolutely a brilliant product. Uh, it's addictive and not many people know about it. So when you actually get to play it, you're like, well, what did you just do? You know, it's really a lot of instruments packed into one. I know with the emulation, 12 string options, you can run a whole bunch of uh, sounds of different styles of guitars, obviously acoustic sounds. Uh, but it's not the first time you guys have got into uh, digital effects. Obviously, the Viper line uh, runs so uh, you can see uh, their functionality. Can you talk a little bit about what those guys do? Well, with Vipers, you know, we didn't just want to go out and do a modeling amplifier. You know, most, most companies have a digital modeling amp, but frankly, digital is not the right way to do it. And, and, the, and the reason I say that is because as you turn digital up, it doesn't get sounding better, it gets sounding worse. And, um, and there's some various reasons for that. We use what we call TransTube, which is a PV patent, which is analog distortion that actually gets sounding better as you turn it up because it's emulating everything that happens in a tube amplifier. So asymmetrical clipping, uh, bias shift, you know, ta uh, power supply sag, all these things are actually mimicked. And so we can make a very natural sounding and natural feeling distortion. So the Viper line is made for the guy who wants to have all different kinds of options, but still have it sound legit, you know, and that's what it's for, and, it's, and it works. So all of these great products are available at galacticmusic.com.au. I uh, also want to give a shout out to PV who are going to support us with a giveaway. We're going to give away a piranha head. So check out muso.com.au for all the details on how you can enter that competition. And thank you so much for your time, Michael. Really appreciate it, man. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been loving it here in Australia. Well, cheers, bro. Thanks for coming along.